Welcome to Book Buzz, brought to you by the Peter Central Book Library. I am Miss Shannon. And I'm Miss Linda, and we are back to talk about uh, programming for the second half of December in the Youth Services Department. Yes, the first half of December was extremely busy. I, yeah, it was extremely busy, <laughs> and you know what I'm thinking? We're very tired. Yeah, <laughs> we're exhausted. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking they're still listening to that program. <laughs> There was so much on there. Yeah, we'll take you all day just and rewatch and take notes. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, the second half, not qu quite no, as crazy. We run into the holidays, and we aren't going to do big programs, you know, on and, Christmas. Yeah, and the kids are out of school and right. all the family stuff. So, um, yeah. Now, about book buzz bits, this you know, got to know stuff. So, you know how we can do whatever we want and change our mind and stuff. So you did? I did. Probably five minutes ago. I did, pretty <laughs> much. No, it wasn't five minutes ago. It was uh, about 9.30 this morning. Oh, I okay. totally changed it. So what I was going to do, you know, talk Christmas and traditions and, you know, and, and even just take time and show Christmas crafts from around the world kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not doing any of that. <laughs> Uh, tradition. Nope. Tradition. <laughs> I am going to read a story that <clears throat> was on that came across on um, uh, Facebook. This was actually put Myra Elenic mm. put this on their Facebook page, um, and I was actually going to mention this guy's name in my um, in my my previous idea, um, but I, I, when I read this story, it's such a beautiful story, so I'm going to read it. Okay. okay. Well, it's on Facebook, so let's <coughs> put that as the, that's the credentials. You know it's real. Yeah. <laughs> well, Mrs. Olenek would never steer us wrong. Hmm. As the holiday season of 1938 came to Chicago, Bob May wasn't feeling much comfort or joy. A 34-year-old ad writer for Montgomery Ward, May was exhausted and nearly broke. His wife, Evelyn, was bedridden on the losing end of a two-year battle with cancer. So this is a very touching, true story. This left Bob to look after their four-year-old daughter, Barbara. One night, Barbara asked her father, why isn't mommy like everybody else's mommy? And as he struggled to answer his daughter's question, Bob remembered the pain of his own childhood. He was a small, sickly boy, constantly picked on and called names but he wanted to give his daughter hope and show her that being different was nothing more, nothing to be ashamed of. So more than that, um, he wanted to, uh, more than that, he wanted her to know that he loved her and would always take care of her. So he began to spin a tale about a reindeer with a bright red nose who found a special place on Santa's team. Barbara loved the story so much that she made her father tell it every night before bedtime. And as he did, it grew more elaborate because he couldn't afford to buy his daughter a gift for Christmas. Bob decided to turn the story into a homemade picture book. So early in December, sadly, Bob's wife died. And though he was brokenhearted, he kept working on the book for his daughter. A few days before Christmas, he reluctantly attended an employee uh, company party at Mon Montgomery Ward. His co-workers encouraged him to share the story that he'd written. After he read it, there was a standing ovation. Everyone wanted copies of their own. Montgomery Ward bought the rights to the book from their debt-ridden employee, and over the next six years at Christmas, they gave away six million copies of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer to shoppers. Every major publishing house in the country was making offers to obtain the book. This is, there's some really sweet parts. In an incredible display of goodwill, the head of the department store returned all the rights to Bob May so that he could make the money. Four years later, Rudolph had made him into a millionaire. So he had remarried and his new brother-in-law was a, a songwriter, a successful songwriter named Johnny Marks. So he took the story and put it to music. So Christmas as, Carol, we all yeah, know. Uh, oh, you know, very. But then they went through and they were, you know, trying to sell it, pitch it to like Bing Crosby and all these famous uh, people that were doing, Christmas, you know, singing Christmas carols. 
everybody turned it down. And then they approached Gene Autry. He was that cowboy star that had scored a holiday hit with Here Comes Santa Claus, you know, a few years before. But Audrey, he wasn't impressed. Autry wasn't impressed with the song about the misfit reindeer. And they kind of begged him, just give it a try. Well, leave it to his wife. His, <laughs> you know, God love her. She was so touched by the line, they wouldn't let poor Rudolph play in any reindeer games that she insisted her husband record the tune. So, yay, Mrs. Autry. So within a few years, it became the second best-selling Christmas song ever, right behind what was, do you think was the number Jingle one? Jingle Bells. No. Silent Night. No. It's one done by Bing Crosby, too. Oh, White Christmas. Yes, you got it. Um, White Christmas, Rudolph has come to life through, you know, as we've seen it every, you know, everywhere with toys. It's, um, and as the last line of the song goes, he'll go down in history. Um, Robert L. May, who wrote Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Isn't that a beautiful story? That is story? a beautiful story. And Rudolph, I, do you know that Rudolph is my favorite reindeer? I, well... I have a whole tree in my house oh, just de dedicated to, to Rudolph, Rudolph and his friends from the like the 60s classic. Yeah, I mm -hmm. love, love, love that Christmas classic, that cartoon. And I, mm -hmm. I, yeah, it's one of my favorites too. Although you have topped me, I do not have a Rudolph the Reindeer. I've collected Rudolph paraphernalia for as long as I can remember and I have a Rudolph tree okay. because of it. I have the DVD. Oh, there you go. And a book. I have the DVD too, Linda. I'm Actually, sure. I probably have the Blu-ray. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Exactly. And the yeah, kids or, are like, "What's a DVD?" <laughs> right. And probably in three. I actually had it 3D. taped off of TV on oh, VHS all those years ago. I remember. And like, we had we lived in West Virginia at the time, and of course, it had still the commercials so we taped off of TV, and like, it had all these like West commercials for like the what, local like. Yeah. Um, you know, car dealers or whatever. Yeah. So all and then, I, but I watched that so much because I'd watched it all year too. Yeah. That the tape like fell apart. Oh. Okay. So, <coughs> but Rudolph, yes. <coughs> Sorry, Linda. Thanks for sharing. I did not see that story, but um, it's a good story. It is a good story. Yeah. Montgomery yeah. Ward. And God we have him. many, many adaptations of the Rudolph oh, story. Oh my gosh of the Rud different versions of the Rudolph as the song and the um, movie. Because, yes, there was, um, there's the 60s classic, you know, with Hermie and the Bumble. Yeah. But there was also an animated movie that came out way before that, like a cartoon. There's been other mm -hmm. ones There's as well. been cartoons since then, Yes. Too. Yeah. There's lots of stories about okay. Rudolph. Okay. So, so that was a come good... Come to the library. Yes. And get an audition of Rudolph and see if you can, think, you know, to yeah. learn the tale. Compare notes. And, and think of Robert L. May who wrote mm -hmm. it and became a millionaire, even through very extreme um, circumstances. Yeah. It's and beautiful. Beth, her husband's name is Bob May. Uh, is it? Mm -hmm. I was, you know, when I was reading that, I thought of her, but I didn't know her husband's first name. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Very cool. All right. Nice, nice story, Miss Linda. Okay. So moving on to our holiday programming, we have some fun teen events coming up. Um, we have a teen-only DIY Christmas wreath. I was going to bring a sample of it, but it was kind of cumbersome to carry back and forth, so I didn't really I didn't bring it. But it turned out really nice. We're making wreaths out of recycled um, coat hangers and Christmas bulbs, and it's picture in your mind. It's turn. I'm 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 proud of myself. It turned out I, really nice. I am proud of you too Thank because you. it did turn out really nice. It was a little bit of a struggle because I was like having to learn what I was doing, but it's they're, pretty. They're really, really nice, and you can make it completely for free. That's just for our teens, though, for grades seven through twelve at four o'clock on December sixteenth, um, and then also on December sixteenth. So if you want to just hang out at the library, you can stay tuned for our. So in um, September, October, and November, we read through the Shadow and Bone trilogy by Lee Bardugo. And now we are moving on to um, Six of Crows, which I, I'm not sure this is a trilogy or if it's only two. I don't remember. But anyways, there's definitely more than one. And so if you have seen this, the Shadow and Bones TV series, which is kind of why we started this book club, because that really um, increased the popularity of the series. Mm -hmm. The characters in the Six of Crows do appear in the TV series. So the TV series is a little bit confusing if you've only read the, um, the Shadow and Bone books. <coughs> so um, there is this group, um, Kaz Brecker. He is like, um, kind of like a criminal. Criminal prodigy, actually, as he's described. 
and he is having a he's offered a chance at a deadly heist that could make him rich beyond his wildest dreams but he can't pull it off alone so he brings in a convict with a thirst for revenge a sharpshooter who can't walk away from a wager a runaway mm. with a privileged past a spy known as the wraith a heart render using her magic to survive the slums and a thief with a gift for unlikely escapes so these group of people they're on their way um, and they're looking to capture someone that you might know from Shadow and Bones series. So they kind of oh, intertwine. Um, so six dangerous outcasts on one impossible heist. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be discussing this book on December 16th at 7 o'clock. The first five teens that register do get their own free copy of the book. Um, and I also do give a copy, you know, if I have extras to those that attended the, the month before. Um, so make sure you sign up and come and read and discuss this book with us. You, we do ask that you have the book read before you come because that way we can discuss the book together. Excellent. Well, from one book club to another. Okay. From the teen book club to the tween book club, uh, Thursday, December the uh, 16th, same day. Book club day. Yeah, book club day. Uh, first five registrants get the free book. It'll be at 4 o'clock. Come and see me. It's The Christmas Genie by Dan Gutman on the last day of school before Christmas vacation, the students in Mrs. Walter's fifth grade class are in for a surprise. A mysterious, now you have to be aware of these, a mysterious meteorite <laughs> crashes into their classroom and a genie comes out. And when wow. he, yeah, when he offers to grant the class one collective wish, Alex, Chase, and the rest of the kids all present why their wishes are the best. But before they can reach a consensus, they get an even bigger shock. You better be careful what you wish for. Ooh. The Christmas Genie dun, dun, by dun. Dan Gutman. That sounds like a fun one. Yeah, doesn't it? It's all fun and games until meteorite comes crashing into your classroom. I, I, yeah, really. <laughs> really. That would talk about a bad day. <laughs> well, the genie pops out. Yeah. Maybe it's not so bad. Okay. Then, um, so... We're, even during the holidays, we're still doing uh, Family Lego Night, which is usually the fourth Excuse Monday. Me. So it'll be Monday, don't you make me on, Monday, December 27th at 6.30. The Family Lego Nights um, are, um, especially through the holidays, have been holiday themed mm -hmm. or, you know, themed, yeah, pretty much holiday themed, I yeah, guess. Yeah, the Halloween one was real cute. We made like ghosts and witches and stuff. Yeah, and this month, um, in November is Thanksgiving, and okay, and this one will be the um, for the holidays as well. But I want to say I have good news, kind of. I mean, good news for us. This has become so popular. Yeah, and I know that people are anxious to how to come back to in-house programming, mm -hmm. and that may be part of it as well. And also because again, the group sizes are smaller for our in-house programs as we talked last time, you know, for health reasons, um, they are just filling up. And the, the kids, the parents, the families are having a great time. And they, you know, make their little creations from the different card challenges. And we've been putting them out on display on the... Um, one of the bookshelves and, yeah. you know, with the kids' names on it and, and, and what it is. It, it's been really, really a lot of fun. The kids, <laughs> the families have really enjoyed it. Yeah. So if you haven't had a chance, um, uh, look into it. Mm -hmm. um, definitely look into uh, Family Lego Night. Uh, I hate to say, I think December is maybe full, but um, we're starting a new year. Yep. Jump on January. Yeah. Yeah. That's Good family cool. tradition. Start these traditions. Yeah, for sure. All right, so also for our teens and our tweens, we are going to have on December 21st, right before the holidays, we're going to have a teen and tween DIY holiday gift station. So we'll have several different um, gift stations set up where you'll go to each table and you'll make whatever that gift is. Mm -hmm. And then you can, that way you'll have, th you'll go home with three to four um, presents that you can give to your friends, your family. You'll have Christmas shopping done. Um, we're going to be making little hand warmers. Mm. We'll be making... Um, hot chocolate um like oh ornaments. i saw those those are cute mm -hmm. 
and yeah. um, I don't remember at the top of my head what the third one is. I think it's like a sugar scrub or something. Um, so that will be on December 21st at 4 to 5 for the tweens. So they, a lot of them like to walk right over from McMurray, so that's perfect. Um, and then from 6 to 7 for the teens. Registration is required because space is limited and supplies are limited as well. So make sure you get signed up so you can make all those wonderful little gifts. It's going to yeah, be a lot of fun. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. Yeah. We do nice things. We okay. do. What can we what say? Can we we'll give ourselves a pat on the back. <laughs> All right. Then on December 20th, um, Maker Monday. It's right after school. Um, it's the tween age. You, the fourth, fifth, and sixth graders are coming over, um, joining me for lots of fun with Miss Linda and snacks and, you know, just um, you, you'll have so much fun you won't be able to wait till the next time. And we had one, our November one was so successful. Yeah. It was so much fun. The kids were really into everything that I put out, all these different kits and things that they got to move around and experiment with. And they were mixing and matching from each table from different things. And it was so much fun. So Maker Mondays, you come, it's pretty much self run, you know, because you are teaching yourselves and you get to do all this fun stuff. I just get to enjoy and take pictures. December 20th, after school, four o'clock, food included. Um, then chess. Oh, this has been another fun one. Yes. Mr. Pete has really drawn him in. Yeah. He is so popular. We're hoping to get an adult one going, but I could not resist. So um, December 21st at 6.30, live with Mr. Pete. You're gonna have chess and we have all the chess boards. We supply all of that. But I have been ordering chess books mm -hmm. um, as I see them, you know, uh, to up our, you know, our collection for Mr. Pete and the kids. And this one, it cracked me up. I could not believe, like I showed you, a, a board book on chess, a board book for babies. Ba it's called Baby Chess. We're never too young to learn. It says, welcome to chess, baby. <laughs> The super simple primer will introduce little ones to this fun and popular game. Children will learn the names of the pieces and how they move as well as what it takes to win. And um, what I was you know, talking earlier with Miss Shannon was as I was reading this and it is so funny, like cute little faces on all of the chess pieces. <laughs> but when they're when they're explaining what all the chess pieces do, the story rhymes. It's adorable. <laughs> it is really cute. Yes. And um, it gives you little fun facts like the king is the most protected piece. Once it's captured, the game is over. It's just, so Miss Shannon was sharing with me, and I'm going to share with, the, with our uh, worldwide audience here. Um, <laughs> we might be seen in other countries. <laughs> Maybe. Well, I mean, we are on the internet, so you never know. You never know. That's true. That's very true. So Miss Shannon doesn't think that she could learn chess. I do not. I tried when I accidentally got put into a chess group in the sixth grade for our random activity day. Oh. Yep. It was not a fun experience. We ended up playing checkers with the pieces, me and my one friend that got somewhere in that class. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Well, anyway, I thought it, it, I thought that you would do well if you started maybe. with a baby board yep. book. Yeah, maybe if I had a baby Okay, book. you're starting just like these right. little tykes at the very beginning. Oh, it's did. really cute on the It is really cute. Exactly what they do. But our kids knew. that come to this chess club, like they really, like they know their stuff. And, and, and they because they've learned it from Mr. Pete. I know. He does a great job. I'm yeah. so happy for him. Yeah. So, okay. Anyway, Very uh, cool. if you can't make it to the chess club, come and check out the chess books. And we have chess uh, DVDs so you can learn how to play. There you go. Yeah. Very cool. All right. So we didn't hey. get too much books last month episode. So we're going to we talk about time. some new books. So this one I'm really excited about. So I think it was over the summer, maybe last spring. I read, this book's a few years old. I read Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe, and I loved it so much. I actually listened to the book, and the book was read by Lin-Manuel Miranda, which how uh, can you go wrong with that, yeah. right? I kept hoping he would start singing or rapping, but he didn't. But anyways, oh, fun. Um, but you can see this book has won tons of awards, mm -hmm. um, and such a great, beautiful story about, um, you know, first love and friendship and um, 
these two guys that they, they come from totally different ends of the of you know they're very very different backgrounds and um, what brings them together when they become friends. So this is the the, the and then okay. I recently found out they just released a sequel. So this book came out a couple years ago, and again, I just read it recently, wow. not knowing they're making a sequel. Yeah. And then I was like, oh my gosh, they made a sequel. So this just came out. Um, we just got it in like about last month, I want to say. Aristotle and Dante Dive into the Waters of the World. So this is the sequel wow. to Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secret of the Universe. And you, So uh, I love I love this. the book one so much. It was probably one of my... And I, Linda and I, Miss Linda and I are both audiobook readers. We love them. And in it our was car probably and, one of the mm -hmm. best audiobooks I've listened to for a, a long time. And I, th I think it was, you know, and having that, you know, Lynn Manuel Miranda read it was a huge portion of that because the reader does make a big difference on the audiobooks. But so now there's a sequel. So if you need some good reads for the holidays, I recommend picking up this oh, duo. Oh, absolutely. So. Yeah, this looks, um, looks really good. Yeah, excellent story. Cool. So the, I'm looking. I haven't read the sequel yet, but I'm highly looking forward to it. Hmm. I'm waiting for the audio. Maybe Lynn will read the uh, the, the sequel too. <laughs> Very nice. Oh, that. You know what? Probably. Yeah. Why not? Well, he's busy. Well, uh, well. <laughs> he oh, he's a only got a few things going on. <laughs> okay, uh, for me, a new book. Um, it's not a Christmas. This is a cool one. Yeah, it's very cool. One. It is not a Christmas book, but. He wrote a famous Christmas story called A Christmas Carol. And we have, of course, Mr. Dickens' uh, Christmas Carol in all forms. Right. And that's another one that um, came out in how many different movies. Right. You know, where they played Scrooge, you plays. know, different guys mm -hmm. and plays and books and cartoons. And, you know, that this has become or A Christmas Carol had become such a great Christmas book. Well, this is all about um, Charles Dickens. Um, Eliza Davis believed in speaking up for what was right, even if it meant telling Charles Dickens that he was wrong. A charming and timely story of a reader who had the courage and good sense to speak up. Yeah, I was looking at that one. That's, it looks like yeah. a really good book. Yeah, this is... Um, and of course, you know, you got all the great uh, illustrations and, you know, mm -hmm. I just, I love a good picture book. Right. You know, with illustrations. So, uh, Nancy Chernin, Dear Mr. Dickens. Very cool. Yeah. So what Very do you cool. have? All right. So this is a new graphic novel that we just got in by Kayla Miller. Um, she is the author of Click and this is from the world of Click. So this oh. is called Besties Work It Out. So another cute story, uh, another cute graphic novel. Um, you know, th these are. This reminds me also of like like um, El Defo and um, the Babysitters Club books have been turned into graphic novels. They all kind of have that similar target audience, but super super cute story of best friends. Um, and so if you are a graphic novel reader or want to give it a try, these ones are really really fun. These Kayla Miller ones. Um, so the first one I think was Click, and now we have Besties. Work it out. Cute. Yeah. They're fun. Yeah, they're fun. All right. Well, sticking with the holiday theme, um, oh, I who doesn't like, love I Miracle one. on 34th Street? Love, love, love that movie. Yeah. Well, this uh, uh, just a, a revamped edition of yeah. the book. You know, the book is. So I didn't realize it was a book, so that was exciting. Miracle on 34th Street, Valentine Davies, and um, I was looking that this was written. Uh, well, the copyright, 1947, was okay. copyrighted by 20th Century Fox. Copyright renewed, 1975. And then another copyright. So maybe copyright it was a by movie the, first. Then I think somebody it was a, yeah. Because 20th Century Fox would be a production company. Yeah. And they well, wrote a book then about it was the movie. bought by um, Pete Mifflin. Yeah. Right. The um, Harcourt Publishers. Um, yeah, so anyway, who doesn't, I love, love that story in mm -hmm. the movie with Natalie Wood and, yeah. you know, aww. See, I didn't watch the re, the, old, the original version of that movie until I was grown, because I had always seen the remake, which had the little girl from Matilda in it. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's the one we Did had. Did you watch the original? I have. I, 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 I now own both. Okay. In my 60 DVD holiday yeah, collection. Oh. <laughs> I, have, I have every of DVD. Course, of course. I have a real problem when it you're comes to Christmas movies. You're going to have to movies. move out because you're not going to have room for all this. 
But anyway, Miracle on 34th Street. So you can yeah. now read it. I would like to read that book. You can read it. and um, Nice little quick read, too. Yeah, and then watch a movie. That's what I like to do, though, too. I mean, and I think the parents like that, too, when the kids read the mm -hmm. book first. Right. And then watch the movie and see the differences. Because the movies are usually a little, mm -hmm. at least a little bit different. Well, this was based upon the movie since it was like 20th Century Fox had it first. I'm guessing it's going to be pretty close. close. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty but close. But still. Oh, yeah. I love it. Very good. I love that. Yeah, very good story. All right, so this one, I, I'm really excited about this book. I, I, I you know, I, I'm happy to, you know, 2020 and the beginning of COVID was such a difficult time, and so somebody wrote a beautiful book about it. Um, it's called Hello From Here, oh. um, and it was written back and forth between Chandler Baker and Wesley Kane. They kind of, um, it's take, it goes between, I love this when they do this, uh, the voices of two different characters, and each chapter is a different character. Yeah, I like um, that. So this is about Maxine and Jonah, and they meet at the canned goods aisle at a Calif in Calif just as California is about to go into lockdown. Max's part-time job as a personal grocery shopper is about to transform into a health, into a, I can't say that, a, the, the, into something. No, I'm not going to say it because it's it's edited. Oh. Um, Jonah's pre-existing oh. anxiety is about to become an epi epic daily struggle as Max and Jonah get to know each other through FaceTime dates, socially distanced playground hangs, and the escalating heartbreaks of the pandemic. They're pushed apart by what they don't share and pulled closer by what they do. As thoughtful, probing, and informed as it is buoyant, romantic, and funny, Hello From Here cuts across differences in class, privilege, and mental health all thrown into mm. stark relief by the COVID-19 pandemic. Here's a novel that looks at the first two months of the quarantine and adds falling in love into the mess. And there is a... Um, caution, I guess. In the beginning, it says, content notes. Please be aware that this story touches on topics such as parental death, COVID-19, AIDS, generalized anxiety disorders, panic disorder, and racism. So there's some very difficult topics that come up in this book, which um, I like to see difficult topics addressed in teen novels because, let's face it, teens are facing difficult things. And if they, even if they are not, um, it always helps to be aware that others are. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. No, I, so I think I, they need to be tackled, and it's a good it's it's a good way to learn about them and absolutely um, through the books <clears throat> and like you said how people tackle them mm -hmm. and how you deal with it so um, I, I haven't read this yet but I'm really excited I love the cover you know there they are they have their masks on they're spread apart on the on the um, jungle gym um, you know it really captures you know the world that we are living in mm -hmm. and lived in for a long time so um, and, and it, it has you know a, uplifting you know mm -hmm. something good came out of this situation for them too so yeah hello from here by chandler baker and wesley king brand new teen book it's that's good i'd like to um what a challenging couple years we've had mm -hmm. um and i suspect a lot of books started coming out right you know regarding covid and the pandemics and all of that but um to really start talking feelings and what happened and what mm -hmm. was going on for the teens and right. everybody. So I know we have to say goodbye, but um, next time we're together, um, it'll, it'll be a new be, year. It'll be a new year. Here's to 2022. May wow. it be healthy. Wow. Right? I can't even handle the fact that we're like doing it to a right. new year. 2022. <laughs> 2022, here we come. We've All got, right. We've got this. And happy holidays, everyone. You bet. Yeah.